Hey folks, uh, Simon here. Right, what am I doing? What is this about? Um, uh, PCBs, the long and the short of it. I've attempted in the past to make PCBs using a laser printer, tone transfer with uh, shiny paper, photo paper, everything, and for some reason I just can't get it right. And then I bought a bunch of these little Chinese nasty things. Uh, and yeah, well, crap. Anyway, um, yeah, that didn't work out too well. Veribord, yep, yeah, had pretty good. I had, had success with Veribord, quite like it. And um, browsing around YouTube as you do, looking at the following, or you know, it's uh, following various people. Um, I saw somebody with a plotter. I thought, no, oh, that's quite cool. The Arduino powered. Yep, yeah, I'm into Arduino, so that's my kind of thing. Um, what else was on there? Yeah, there was somebody else. Uh, Big Clive. I was up watching Big Clive, BigClive.com's channel, um, and uh, he was there doing PCBs and it looked fantastic. And he was saying about uh, he uses the uh, UV method, all that kind of thing, which looks quite interesting. And he showed some really good methods using um, like a heat shrink tube with the ferrochloride inside, washing it about inside there, and it really looks like a really clean method. I thought, right, the wife might let me do that one because I'm not going to splash ferrochloride all over her best work tops and it's not going to cost me a fortune having to replace them again. Um, and then I was putting one on one together and came up with a cunning plan. Um, a plan, my lord. Uh, so the, what, what is the plan? The plan is to actually build a plotter, just a 3D, uh, just a little plot, not a 3D plotter, sorry, build a, a plot, plotter that you can make as many parts as possible on a 3D printer. Um, why? Mm, well, because I've got a 3D printer. Um, and 3D printers are so much more accessible now. Way back when, you know, it's two, three years ago, uh, 3D printers were few and far between. Um, and you had to pay a fortune, go online. Now, everybody's got one, or at least you know somebody with one and that somebody will do you a quick job on the 3D printer and maybe ask you for you know, a few cans of beer or whatever and uh, the cost of the um, filament used. So that makes it much more accessible, much more easy to use. Um, and so that's my plan, to build a plotter using an Arduino um, 3D printer. There's going to be a little bit of wood involved, got to be wood, maybe, see how it goes, might be able to get around it. Um, and stepper motors. Uh, I've got, uh, luckily, I was digging around in my junk boxes, which uh, I've taken a few photos of my little work area, and there's a, it's to say there's junk boxes, it's, it's maybe I've been a little bit uh, ambitious, this is just junk. Um, I keep everything, throw nothing, and um, yeah, well, I'm going to have to start throwing some junk out. As much as it pains me to say that, I'm going to have to throw some junk. But anyway, in amongst my junk, luckily, um, I had some NEMA 17 type stepper motors. Um, there's the puppies there. Don't know where you can see them. A couple of NEMA 17s. And then raking around elsewhere. Um, some L298Ns. Just a minute. I've got. Yep. As well. So, L298N. Step, uh, these are bipolar, or f sorry, they're for bipolar or DC uh, electric motor drivers, and uh, a servo. Uh, I've got this is a big old big ass servo. Also got buried in the drawers of doom. Little baby servos. So the idea is uh, now this is where it gets. I, I believe X Y being your flat plane. Z being you're up down. Um, a guy at work, oh, uh, I was going to say a guy at work that I work with, well obviously if he's at work I work with him. Um, anyway, he seems to think it's slightly different, but anyway, uh, that's whatever it is. So the flat, I'm going to call it the flat plane, so forwards, backwards, left, right. Um, that's going to be controlled by the two Nina 17s. Uh, oh shit, oh that's the end of that one. Um, belt. Or I may not use a belt. It depends how how it goes as to whether I use a belt because I might use some um, some nylon or something like that wrapped around a spindle, 
capstan winch type of fair to move back to falls. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of makeup as I go along, and then um, to actually mark the board. Sharpies, our old friend Sharpies. Uh, it's a uh, always worth a sniff. Um, yeah. So idea is is that for what I call a z-axis, the wherever I put it, it's it, it's lost already. I've lost it, I think, already. Oh. Um, anyway, yeah, so what I was thinking was, uh, as an example, a ring like that around it with some weight on it, and the servo lift it up and drop it down. There'd have to be some sort of weight on top, so I've got to figure out that whether to glue weights on it or use a spring so that the uh, servo will push it up or the spring will push it down, but I don't want too much force because it will ruin the tip and make the track too thick. Again, that's going to be a bit of trial and error going on there. Uh, I think I'll say that, but I think the servo lifting it up and down inside a, a shoe of some sort. Um, but then we've got to ensure that it doesn't rattle around because uh, that would be no worse than that. Because uh, obviously, you need to try and keep it um, as perpendicular as possible, I guess. Uh, so, I've got to figure out a good way of mounting it, which could be interesting. Um, yeah, so these two L um, L two nine three ends, L two nine three ends, L two nine three ends. Yeah, the L two nine three ends. Um, so I was doing a little bit of research because I was thinking just using the Gerbil type thing and uh, speaking Gerbil term or looking at a ramps board. I don't want to spend the money. Uh, this is just supposed to be something cheap and fun that anybody can do and knock together. Uh, but it actually turns out that it's not as easy uh, as as I first expected. Uh, which so is part for the course really. Um, why isn't it easy? Because G Gerbil. Um, so what we're doing basically is going to be producing the G code. G code gets squirted down and it's uh, interpreted, sent out through the Arduino. Uh, so um, yeah, sent out through the Arduino and drives the steppers through the step drives, obviously. Now then, it turns out these L293s don't really allow that. 298, sorry, 298 ends. Uh, they don't really allow that uh, because the Gerbil code is the direction and steps and that kind of stuff, whereas the, these don't speak in that language. So we need some method of um, bridging that gap. Uh, I suppose there's a few ways. Uh, what I've read so far, the easiest way is uh, L297. Um, which is a driver chip, uh, so basically the Arduino will speak to that and the, uh, that the L297 will speak to the L298 and then hopefully we'll have movement on the um, steppers, all being well anyway. Um, yeah, so th that's about it, introduction to this project. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get an update a week, don't really know, uh, it's time dependent because obviously I've got a, a normal job that I do. Um, and this is a little fun project that I thought I'd try and share with everybody. Um, so uh, without further ado, I shall naff off. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I shall uh, prepare the code, the uh, sketches I'm using so far, uh, draw up the, um, this mush of wires down here that I've got uh, for driving these two steppers. Um, and might even do some information on how to figure out which, because I'm using bipolar steppers, I'm not going to go into unipolar steppers, just stick with bipolars, um, and see if I can give you some indication on what the best ways to find out uh, what goes to where, um, and how to identify the coils, that kind of thing. Okay, so, well, um, I've actually, before I go, so, I shall get another part. Um, being a cheap ass, rather, rather than going for the solid super shiny rods that are solid steel and all that kind of thing, um, this isn't going to be very big. Okay, uh, Like a lot of things in life, disappointing, I know not being as big as what you're expecting, but hey, get, get over it. Um, so I've got this stuff from B&Q here in the UK. Uh, I don't know what the equivalent is in, U in the US, but b and uh, So this is quite thick wall, don't know whether you can see that. 
quite a thick wall, aluminium tube, nice and straight. And luckily, when I built my 3D printer, I had an issue with the bearings. And so I had cause uh, to go and buy some. So I've ended up with a bunch of these little bad boys left over, which fit on here a treat. So, this bar, uh, it's about a, about a tube, sorry, about a metre long, cost me four quid. So far, that's all this has cost me. Um, why am I showing you this? Because of what I 3D printed earlier. So, what did I 3D print earlier? This. Okay, right. For the more astute amongst you, or those uh, who just actually take notes of what other people do. Right, so this is a scaled down version of um, 3D printer. Okay. Um, the idea is, is the tube will fit across. The print area is inside there. So as I say, it's small. Okay. Got the caps. Captive nuts. Yada yada yada. Now why did I print it out like this? Well, can you imagine trying what it is, what it's well uh, from my experiences with my main 3D printer, uh, getting it square is one of the most difficult pain in the ass jobs possible. Um, so I thought, well, why not print it square? I print the whole thing, it's done square on the cab package, whack it up there, print it off, it's square, it saves a lot of effort. But then I was looking at that and thinking, you know, size does matter a little bit, doesn't it? So, after doing something about that, I come up with another cunning plan. Ta da! Game of two halves. So, oh, shit. Okay, so I'll spread another one. Oh no, it lived. So I thought, well, okay, next best thing. Chopped it in half. And make spaces. So, spaces like these. Space fits in there, and in there, and obviously, because they're printed, they're a set length. Therefore, you put all the spaces in, and you've got more size, a bit larger. What I'll do is I'll pause the camera, move the camera, and I'll bash this along and show you a little bit better. Okay, hello again folks, so here we go. Hopefully this will be a little bit better to see of you. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, wreckage all over the place, but never mind. That will fit in there nicely. I think that will do a very, very good job. Um, it's not going to take a lot of weight. It's got to take a pen pressing down with not a lot of force. The old it's just, you can actually just drag it and it leaves a big good enough line. Um, that probably wasn't such a good idea, but never mind. Eh? Um, I'm not going to do what BigClive.com did with his pen when he was playing with his um, uh, tattoo gun. Uh, let's just say there was something inappropriate, but it's well worth watching. BigClive.com. Follow that man. Anyway, anyway, instead of following right now, you, you follow me. So, as I was saying, that bed, yeah, it would do. You wouldn't get much. What, what size is it? What size? That, that is actually what size is it? So, so that would give us an effective print area because of movement, that kind of thing. Probably around 90 mil. I mean, the width can be anything you want. That's the thing. So, but you've got 90 mil in one direction. Um, which, nah, we all like a bit more than that. I, well, I certainly want more space than that. Initially, no, I probably won't, but I know moving on I will. Right, so what, what did I come up with? Um, yeah. So, camera. There's two different drivers, by the way. So they're both HB drivers, they're both L298N, L298N. But they are slightly different, which uh, caused me no end of pain. Oddly, this one when I connected up, one pair of windings into there, one pair of windings into there. 
and across there, the pins. I mean, I used uh, 9, 10, 11, and 9, 10, 11, and 12 pins, 9, 9 through 12, with the standard stepper, stepper uh, library. And then simply a 12 volt feed into there, ground into there, ground from there to your Arduino. Um, Basically, you make sure your ground is uh, from your feed, it goes into your Arduino as well, so I can sense it. Yada yada. Uh, if you want to power your Arduino from here, you can. You can put you get a 5 volt feed from this pin going out to your Arduino, and that'll power it by itself, sort of standalone. Um, but yeah, uh, pin, pin, this one plugged it in, got this dinky little switch on it, which don't really know what it does. Um, uh, yeah, this one, uh, stepper motor works beautiful, absolute treat, flies backwards and forwards, does stepper motory stuff, no worries. This one, uh, wired up exactly the same way, as you can see, I had a bit of a tantrum with it. Um, and basically the stepper motor just sat there, juddered, jiggered around, uh, everything like that. I tried to trace the tracks on the back so that I could understand a bit more uh, follow what was going on um, but to be honest my knowledge wasn't that oh shit uh, my knowledge isn't that great um, but I did give it a go probably when I got a bit more time is I'll actually get a proper wiring diagram out uh, and uh, schematic and go for it properly so, so I can understand it and see why I was having issues on this one I can only assume it's wired up in a slightly different way uh, for the inputs uh, from the Arduino because the uh, your down the back there you won't be able to see it on the camera but down the back there you've got the 1NA 1NB, 1NC, 1ND uh, which is similar to this along the back edge there along the front edge there You've got your enable in one, in two, in three, in four, and enable again. So this will actually do DC motors as well, which is quite handy. Um, if you want to power a DC motor from your Arduino or possibly your Pi, um, you can get one of these, bang it in there, and uh, away you go. All good fun. Anyway, yeah, so that's enough about them. Uh, yeah, that, that one, yeah, well, I'll get it. Get a schematic and have a look at that properly. Anyway, so yeah, um, where was that? This, yes, this. Uh, yeah, 90 mil. Now, nah. so extendable, my boy, extendable. So basically, all I did, I mean, I've done these in Tinkercad. Um, brilliant product. Uh, very basic. Uh, exceedingly basic. Uh, but if you're, if you've never done. 3D work before, it's a good starting point I think. Some people might turn around and say, yeah, but it gives you bad habits, all that kind of thing. Well, tell you what, if it does what you need, then, and you're not doing it for a living, does do the bad habits matter that much? Well, I suppose they do, but no, anyway, hell, bollocks to them. Right, so yeah, so the idea is, is you can put those adjusters in, and ta-da! Obviously, so that's a uh, direct connect. If you want to just build a small one and make it longer and longer, that's 30 mil and 40 mil. So we've now got an effective distance there. So an exact distance between the posts, 190 mil, which in American is seven and just under half an inch. So I don't know what that is. Five eighths? No, four eighths. It's four eighths half. No. I don't know, 3 eighths. No, it can't be 5 sixteenths. There. Anyway, millimetres. Stick to millimetres, guys, it's easier. Uh, yeah, so that's 19, uh, 190 mil. Which, in reality, take 10 mil off, 180 mil, so we're going to have 180 mil travel forwards backwards. And we're still going to be, well, the left right is not governed by this. That's the beauty. Left right can be anything you want. And you've probably been taking a sneaky peek at these back here. So, bar, bar, right? And then, two bars to go across. So this is where I'll put these together. The idea is, two bits of wood, 
over the right angle and they fasten in there at the same height elongated holes for screws so you can fasten them on and uh, move them up so that is dead level uh, and that's that's the idea there so that can be as wide as you want within reason because I'm going to be using hollow tube um, I was actually thinking about the hollow tube but we're stiffening it up a bit uh, and I was thinking about that uh, no more nails crap good sorry stuff that no more nails is really good stuff um, and just using some of that uh, down, the, down the hollow tube because it comes with on a squirty tube I think because it rock, sets rock hard squirt that down there that's going to give it some more rigidity might be good might be bad I don't know I might, I might, I might try it I'll see how it goes but yeah anyway so yeah so two bars I'm looking at going probably about 200 mil so that yeah I'd like to get 200 mil usable surface area which is quite a big area actually quite a big area indeed so that's going to be what 200 by 180 did we say yeah yeah so that's one 190 overall length with an effective effective distance there of 180 200 so the actual bits of wood because uh, what you got to think of is if I go put these at 200 there and there only a bit of wood so I've still got to put a carriage in there of some sort which is going to have some width and one side or the other is going to have to give up give up some of that width so my carriage what I'm thinking at the moment is probably something no wider than that I'd like to keep the carriage that will buzz backwards and forwards with the pen on um, the relay fastened in the uh, relay sorry the servo fastened in some way on the back with the arm coming out of there as an actuator to lift the pen up and down um, but it depends well that, yeah that, that's actually right out of the water there isn't it so that doesn't fit between them holes anyway so yeah that's out of the water bollocks so we're looking at I might actually reprint these and give these an extra 5 mil separation no, because the bearings, are, yeah, I don't know. After I'll have to think about that a little bit more. It's the best way of doing it. Might make a recess. Uh, but anyway, it's actually going to be quite thick, isn't it? Between them, got to figure out. Got to figure that out. Do I have it on the front, on the back, on the side? Ooh. Yes, there we go. So if. If I take them holes a bit wide, another 5mm apart maybe. Oh sorry, yeah, if I widen these holes by 5mm, the idea is then is the bars that these mount in there will have the gap. That should then fit between the bars. I'm just trying to keep the profile as thin as possible, or as low, small as possible. Might even embed that in. That would be good. Embed that in there. Mmm, yeah, so that'll be it. Embed the servo inside. That's going to be posh. Yeah, embed the servo in there. Um, servo horn on there. Hopefully I'm doing all this on camera. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'll put my pen down in the... Oh, there we go, the other shelf of doom. No, I'll tell you what, let's do it with the lid on, because otherwise I'll draw all over my hands. Right, so yeah, servo horn. Then, is that parallel? It isn't, is it? Need to find a pen that's got a parallel shaft on it. Unless... Ah. So I'm just thinking there of a wave because that this needs to be wedged because it's we can't have it wobbling around otherwise we're going to lose the accuracy if that's drawing and wobbling flopping around we can't have that 
Uh, so I got a parallel pen with a mounting bracket. Um, yes, now there's a thought. Yep, notepad, notepad time. Oh, there's the information on the servos, on the steppers that I'm using. Uh, basically, I got the seal number of steppers and looked it up. Uh, so I know that I've got 1.8 degrees per step, which is 200, 200 steps per ro full rotation, 10 volts, 0.4 amps. Um, I also checked the coil windings to see what I had, 5.2 ohms. And my stepper motors, because they've been on the shelf that long, um, well, they, they, they're out of date, uh, no longer continued, and the uh, data sheet wasn't available. The nearest one to the stepper motors I had, I've got the K112-02W, uh, was the K124. Um, which, oddly, had well not oddly it's hardly unsurprising different um color resistance different voltage so hey guess what going on there anyway moving swiftly on right so where was i what the hell was i thinking of there i was going down the road of the pen and carriage yes so we're going to have the two bars coming across there and if I had a mounting plate on that lines, so that would be going forwards and backwards. So on that mounting plate from the top, if I were to do something on those lines, it's probably a proper name for that, I have no idea where it is actually. Uh, I did like a dovetail, female dovetail, I guess. And then on the bracket that holds the sharpe, we have the. Is that the tail of the dove? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have the male male version. With some method of holding the pen on. Um. Just got to make sure that the tolerance, see this way we've got the tolerance issue. I guess I could put some bearings in on that side. Um, yeah, actually, put a bearing in with a, um, that's an option. Sure, I've got some ball bearings rolling around somewhere. Um, yeah, I need to think, think this through a little bit more as the best way of fitting it so that the pen will sit, will mount and will be stable um, and we'll draw our nice tracks yeah that's definitely got to be thought about uh, what else needs to be thought about the height of this from the bed so I'll put away the notepad of probably getting lost in about 20 minutes time in here I'll be eaten by some small tribe from under the bench. Uh, yeah, so obviously this will be super glued together. Oh shit! Or gorilla glued. I, I, I must admit, I like gorilla glue. That's awesome stuff. Absolutely cracking stuff that is. And I tend to use the gel. I mean, the the, the super glue fluids are great. Um, the one of the beauties about using, if you weren't to use the jelly, you're going to use the super glue fluid, is uh, it would wick into the joints. So I could hold that together and put a dab of it on the top, and it would wick into the joint, which is actually really handy. But any gaps at all, and as you can see, when I've actually, to be honest, I've had to carve this up a bit because this came out 0.2 of a mil too wide for that. So. As you can see there, it's a little bit wide. So I've uh, chopped this one down with a knife, which is why it's super rattly. Um, but I'll read it. I'll reprint that uh, so as it's a, a better fit. Um, but yeah, anyway. But uh, the look, the gel versions of either super glue, gorilla glue, or any of the uh, cyanotype glues, um, 
they will fill a gap whereas the fluid won't. You can get the thin, medium and thick ones which do claim to fill gaps and you usually get them from good model stores. Um, uh, they used to do the RC models and all that sort of garbage. But anyway, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're a good source of glue actually. and pretty, Actually, um, silicon wire. That's a very good place to get silicon wire because it's a tough one to get hold of, strangely enough. Um, anyway, yeah, so that needs to figure out the height of that. I don't think it needs, doesn't need to be too high. So basically, once the bar's in, the caps, they'll need to be drilled out. The caps are on to hold down the bars. Um, I've just done the design for the clamps that will go on the bearings. The, so I'm going to put two bearings on this side. <laughs> and one on that side. Um, with I don't know what surface I'm going to use yet. Um, again, it's only going to get the weight of a pen and some pa and uh, PCB. So we're not we're looking at grams, not even you know not even a hundred grams. Um, so I might just use some thin uh, thin thin uh, this type of board. What the hell you call it? Um, particle board. Because that's with it being man-made, it's nice and flat. As long as it's not obviously bent. Anyway, um, but yeah, so that'll fit on. That'll probably weigh more than anything else, actually. Um, if I can get some 10 mil, maybe something on those lines. Um, yeah, so bearing there, bearing there, bearing there, and rocking and rolling. And that should do it nicely. Where so I've got to figure out: Do I make the pen st so this got to stand back slightly? Uh, the pen central, so I can get the full swing. Um, yeah, I reckon it'll be pretty cool. Anywho, uh, enough prattling on. Uh, I'll put a link underneath to the video of this being printed. If you want 20 minutes of mind-bending boredom, please feel free to while away uh, that 20 minutes of your life that could be better spent plucking your eyebrows or trimming your nasal hair um, or other such fun stuff like uh, I don't know drawing pins behind the fingernails um, yeah so 3D printer oh the 3D printer is a Pusher i3 by Cintron um, it's actually I, I, had, I had not nothing but issues with it to begin with and so basically I've got it going and it runs perfect now however um, in the photos you'll see it's just a bird's nest of wiring and I don't want to stop well, I don't want to disconnect all the wires and start again um, because it's running so well so what I'll probably do is when I come to service it next um, is I will actually go through and sort it all out because uh, there's a few other little bits that need sorting on it um, where the end stop is held on with a cable tie and a broken piece. Um, I'll just pan round to it now, um, he says, as he breaks his camera. And there, uh, yeah, so as I said, bird's nest, I think you can agree that's a bird's nest. But I'll just see if I can zoom in. And you can see. Okay, you can't see. This isn't very good at... So the Nikon Coolpix doesn't like... There we go. So, that is the adjuster for the end stop. I'm not going to touch anything because that is just drilled... It, 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 that is absolute garbage, this. Uh, this is the original. Uh, I've got so, I've got the uh, designs for, the, for a newer version, which I will get around to printing off. And... Uh, using that but I've also got buried away somewhere on shelf of doom 2 yeah oh hell I'm getting good at this I've actually managed to find something so let's see if we can zoom out instead of zoom in and there we go right I'll put you back to where you were 
Yeah, ignore the rest of the junk on there because there's all sorts of crap. Yeah, so here I've also got this proximity sensor. Um, that will, my friends, go on the printer um, and enable me to be able to self level. Which, if my voice is going weird, is because I'm wandering off to go and get the uh, new carriage. So there, obviously, it's still got the raft on it. Um, so yeah, the idea is is that goes on the back. The uh, it clamps around the motor. That will sit on there, and the printer will whiz up and down and do all sorts of funky stuff and self-level. And there's another bit on the plot. Yeah, so that looked quite cool. Oh, it should well, it looked quite cool. Well, it should be cool once it's done. Um, but yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, get around to it at some point. Um, anyway, yeah, that's enough for me. Right, live long, prosper, enjoy, and uh, tune in for the next thrilling episode when I finally get around to doing a bit more, which hopefully will be in the next couple of days. Okay, right, thanks guys.